the Cisco systems, and, and we've been um, exploring the, uh, the nature of a connected city um, for several years, um, and, and that's sort of morphed into the smart city debate. And, and 2013, we're at the Internet of Things, and as we frame the Internet of Everything. And I'll try and put that into some context and uh, um, see where we go. So, one of the ways that uh, we look at this, so Internet of Things seems a very functional description, which is a sort of a machine to machine sort of process and conversation. Mm -hmm. And it actually has to be much more than that to be of any resonance to our society. It has to be about how we engage, how people engage with machines, and how we can engage with each other. Um, in ways that are meaningful for, for us individually and, and you know, in, in broader society. Um, so, you know, and, and it's really, it, it, it is a real phenomenon, the Internet of Things. It, it is, um, there's a mushrooming of devices that are the objects of our fabric, uh, uh, in our urban fabric and, and, and wider is um, in our industrial processes, the, the sensors that become, are come so cheap in themselves that, you know, th these are some calculations by a number of research agencies that say that, that are, um, you know, there are, there are several um, million devices today um, forecast by, by our economists in our, in our company and, and others have said by 2020 we're going to have 50 billion devices in the world. That's going to mean something and where do we go with that? Is that going to be a dystopian future, or is it something that's enhancing to where, to our, our lives? So, but but I think there are some softer issues, fundamental issues that are that are more important than the technology itself. Um, is how design, things like design play a role? How we can our communities in, in, engage with this um, new economic models? Um, We've heard some of this here today, actually, about sort of what 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 could be new consumption economic models um, um, that are, and, and I think that technology affords us this. The open source movement and modularity, divisibility, low cost affords us to think in that way, and 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 those models are proving viable in all sorts of ways. Um, one of the Downsides of this, and I, this this came up. Uh, I saw this on a newsstand earlier this year. I don't know if some any of you have, but it but it's reflects as a, it's from the, the mail. Um, about Big Brother and our fridge, right? And, and it's about sort of the <coughs> smart metering rollout and some of the uh, sensationalist headline. But it taps into a, a real concern that we have to recognise. What does this mean for? Um, what does technology coming into our homes mean for us? Is it something that um, we, we want is that what, what are the outcomes of this? Um, and then that, actually, the smart city debate itself is a, is, um, has, has charted an interesting path. Um, and I think that uh, you know a few companies, of which ours, IBM, Siemens, and so <coughs> forth, have have to some audience been seen as pushing a technology vision, a future, and. And then commentaries such as this one from the Boston Globe, sort of putting putting out, and it asks a question, and I say, well, it's it's green wired and even helpful. Do we even want this? Well, my reaction is, absolutely, we do want this. Um, but but I think that the the conversation is a bit too skewed at the moment, and it's very early stages. Um, so, you know that there there are some of us in 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 these companies, and I, and I know people in the, in those other companies as well that are exploring this and the nature of how technology can be meaningful in, in, um, in, a, broader, in a broader sense. Um, but just before I, I, I reflect on some projects that we've been doing around that, you know, I guess the way I see it is sort of broken out into some of the stages. We, we, are, we have a networked infrastructure across our society to, to some extent, whether that is the South Korean model that's ubiquitous, um, symmetrical broadband, <laughs> or, or in the UK where it's getting much better. Um, we, we we're also have transformed the way that we, um, you know, public digital services are um, transformed over the last several years. Um, the way that we move about, our information flows, um, and, and also the growth of data. The open data movement is, um, is, you know, yeah, is grown enormously, and the UK has been at the forefront of that. But we're at the early stages of really analysing that data, and the data not just comes from our public information, but, but also from, from these sensors. And what, what that's telling us, I mean, we, we 
our walking sensors in, in that respect, you know, the, the growth of mobile phones is, 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 uh, is, is providing all sorts of information that we, we can use, we're, we're barely doing it, um, and, and then we can question whether, you know, how we do that in the right ethical ways and so forth. Um, we, the, the smart cities, so, so where it's got to then, and the data connected society, we, we realize that, you know, that, that cannot just be um, creating new developments, Chinese cities in South Korea, um, and which uh, there's a, a notable project in Songdo that we've been involved in. Um, what does it mean for our existing communities, cities? And so some of the work we've done with the Young Foundation based here in the UK and, and an offshoot of their, their future communities work, an organization called Social Life, have been exploring how we can do that. And, and one of the projects we've been working with them is in, is in uh, the south side districts in Chicago, um, looking at sort of crime mapping and how, um, and, and one of the developers of a region of, of a part of that city in the regeneration has invested in this as well. And we're, we're in the process of sketching how some you know, data can be, can be used for, to, to help those neighborhoods that are bridge these new developments and how that can help them become you know, understand what's going on there and become part of it, but also to address some of their social issues. Um, that, you know, the social life themselves are doing all sorts of work in the UK um, uh, with, with some developers, but uh, you know, in Malmo, and, and we're exploring that in other cities. Um, the, the open data movement, you know, as I mentioned, that, that's really taking off, and, um, but, but it, and it's, um, you know, and, and there are outcomes, there are useful applications, and, and um, that are emerging from that, and that's more profound towards a, a more expansive, uh, participatory sort of open innovation process. And, and that extends to some agencies of, of government in, in, in city governments, like the one in Amsterdam, that, um, that talk about the wiki city. This is um, the, the head of the Department of Physical Planning in that city, a city that's underwater fundamentally. They have a a 10-year planning consultation process that is completely opened up to, to, the, to the residents of, of Amsterdam. And they run all sorts of events throughout the city um, to, um, in, and getting people engaged in that. And they see it as fundamental to what they do. Um, so, you know, traditional institutions are adapting and recognizing what they can do in, their, in the functions of, of, of a city. Um, design plays a you know, a crucial role here, and, and arguably, smart cities for us individually starts in our homes and how we interact with, with our own four walls. And, and this fantastic application and device is called the Nest, and I'm sure many of you have seen it. it uh, I don't think it's come to the UK yet, but, but, it's, a, but it's, a, it's a learning thermostat, and, and, and the software that sits behind it, it it observes through sensors the way that we go about and use our homes, and then adapts the profiles of, of the way that uh, the the um, you know the, the the way that your um, energy is consumed. Um, in in um, in New York, we're working with a company called City Twenty Four Seven in looking at the street furniture and how um, that can become more interactive, more. Um, capturing real-time information flows um, that are useful for residents, for visitors to a city where it has a lot of, um, of people that are uh, you know, coming in and out of the city. Um, and it's just a, 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 an example of a trend where lots of the, the street, fabric, street fabric, from lighting to you know, signs and bus stops, are becoming more interactive. But I think it's early stages because this one in London, which I'd seen and wondered quite what was going on there, is a, is a smart bin, right? And it's got adverts. And, and it turns out that that one's now just been pulled because it, there were some things happening there. They, they were tapping into, into your mobile phone, getting the MAC address information as you were walking by, which raises, you know, touches on the, you know, <laughs> the, the privacy issues that are. And, and so fundamentally, it needs a sense of tr we need a sense of trust, and, and perhaps, you know, so applications like like that seem interesting, but uh, you know, are, are perhaps seen as um, you know miss, missing what, how we can see some benefit from it. So, 
Other ways that, that we're seeing how we can understand our community in, in broader ways is through social graphing. A company called Trampoline Systems in Shoreditch in East London that is, uh, and, we, and we'd worked with them in, in, in mapping what's going on in the tech city cluster there. Um, and, and this is through Twitter feeds, but there are other ways you could do this and, and just shows the interactions between the individuals, the businesses in that community. But it also then just, just very simply just shows the, the um, you know, just, just how busy that, that area is. Um, but one of the, the, the fundamental point I want to come on to here now is, is, is somehow what, what do we really mean by a city in a digital age? Um, I went to a talk earlier this year about um, are, is, uh, are garden cities relevant in the 21st century? Um, so Ebenezer Howard's vision of the garden cities in, in, uh, around London, um, and, that, and that was set out and the reasons for that. But, I, but, I, and I, and I, my reaction is absolutely it is, but it's not in the same way as, as Howard meant it, but, but actually in a, in a broader sense, um, locally, but, but internationally, globally, how we interact um, not as a, it, just within the place itself. Um, the, other, the other image there on the top right is, is the drawing from the guy who originally sketched out the, what the design of the internet is. Paul Baran in 1962 um, was tasked by the, art, by the US Defense Department to design what, what, how the America could become more resilient in, in, um, if, you know, during a nuclear attack. And, and that was the genesis of the internet. Um, <laughs> And the, other, and the other one, the bottom right, is, is from a book called Beyond Smart Cities, where it just shows actually some of the interactions between cities around the world, um, the social interactions, um, the sharing of knowledge and experiences. Um, back to the UK, and uh, sorry I couldn't find one for, for um, Yorkshire, but look at the southeast of England. Um, actually, you know, how can we, we can't really define London as, as a city just from the boundary of the, the political boundary of it. Um, in fact, the, the ebbs and flows of that city are, reach enormously, and I've seen, and there's been quite a lot of academic research around this from geographers. Um, actually, you know, some, some takes on it, the whole of the UK, the whole of England and Wales, to, to a great extent, is one giant metropolitan region. Um, and then, you know, and you, you can question then how our, our, physical infrastructure needs to adapt to that, that it, perhaps it doesn't today. And, and technology affords us to react to that in, in more flexible ways. Um, an image that we've used so to, to build from that, you know, we, we, we travel to these, pol these centers of cities, um, almost like, you know, going to get water, but uh, we commute to compute, so to speak. Um, and, but I think technology affords us to think differently to, the, to, to that. Um, you know, it, it, it seems strange that we do that, right? Um, and it seems strange to lots of others around the world that have been exploring this from, from the Netherlands, France, um, South Korea, um, free countries uh, that have national strategies around this about smarter ways of working. And, um, and we've been developing some projects in, in applying technology like video and telepresence to, to um, make that usable for people in their local communities. Um, in the Randstad region of the Netherlands, from an early pilot that we did, there are over 120 of these now, now um, <clears throat> that, um, that, that are, are affiliated, um, have different sort of functions, of, you know, from, from the bottom right there, um, yoga classes, that, that came up last night from a place that I know in Amsterdam that uh, they're, they're doing in the evening there. Um, and you think, well, smaller towns have, have a big role in this. Smaller towns and communities. I, I live down on the south coast, um, but I'm in and out of London all the time. So how can some of the things that you see in the big cities be applied in, in those smaller places um, in, and make, them, make smaller communities engage further in, in our global economy, in, in, in wider society. And, and I've been involved with a number of projects down, down in East Sussex around well, the, the top left there is a group, <coughs> um, a few of us sort of got that gap together called Eastbourne Can, um, looking at how we can connect up some of the digital businesses in the, in the town. Um, and tapped into the RSA Fellows Network, um, Wired Sussex, which is an, a uh, business membership organization, 
Um, there, there's a entrepreneurial efforts like co-working spaces opening up. Um, and we've hit some problems with that, just how to ex expand it beyond that, that early enthusiasm. Um, some form of digital media um, social network w seems to be a way to go. But we, I mean, the, this, this one here is the <laughs> civic crowd, which we were not using, but it's one that's come out of a, a group that formed the hub um, in London and that's expanded globally. Um, technology, social networks, the way that we interact seem, um, you know, seem to be enhancing to how we can interact locally and, and, and across our regions. Um, some of the vehicles that I've found that are most effective in getting projects going are like in Amsterdam, like in Helsinki. Um, the Amsterdam Innovation Motor Group has, um, in, you know, has, the city finds a way of engaging with global companies like us, with national businesses, with small um, entrepreneurial startups. Um, Forum Virium has been most notable in developing uses, applications of open data. Um, and that city is now, and, and Amsterdam has moved now to creating the Amsterdam Metropolitan Institute that is, uh, that is going to take their efforts to the next stage. And it is these special purpose vehicles that are very powerful. Um, and to wrap up, I just want to say what, one of the big things that we found, it always takes, and we've heard it here today as well, always takes visionary leadership from someone. And, you know, whether that is a mayor or a community group, an individual that, that, that can drive an agenda. It, but, that, but what you do also need then is to explore these new models of participation, um, public, private partnerships. Um, and when we look at technology, I think there are how different systems can interact, because you know, that, that is an issue technically, um, and that's being explored very heavy, heavily. So, and that's very rapid sort of pot over, uh, potted history and overview of what's going on in, around the Internet of Things and cities.